What is up? We're excited to introduce some of you for the first time to the self-awareness checklist, which is available for free online right now. This handy tool is designed to help leaders like you become more self-aware and ultimately more effective in your role as a leader. So to kick things off today, I want us to explore the physical self-awareness section of the checklist. This is the second part. So listen to the other podcasts if you want to get into the emotional part. But today we're going to be providing valuable tips for enhancing your overall well-being. So let's dive in. Let's look at on the physical aspect of assessing your energy levels. As a self-aware leader, it's important to be cognizant of your daily energy highs and lows. And I like to rate mine on a one to 10. And I can't use seven because we always use, uh, everybody always uses seven. So I'm going to look at my daily energy. I'm going to be like, okay, at two o'clock, I kind of get a low. Why? Is it because I ate carbs? Because I drank the night before? What caused me to have a low? in my daily energy levels. And I'm going to be self-aware enough to recognize this. I'm also not going to schedule meetings at two o'clock if every day at two o'clock I'm kind of getting low energy. I want to talk to people in my highest energy times. I want to have meetings when I have the highest energy. So I want you to take note of when you feel most energetic and focused as well as when you experience dips in your energy levels and you be selfish about it, you understand your personal energy patterns, and then you optimize your daily schedule for maximum productivity and well-being. And trust me, as a leader, if you always put yourself first, and physically, emotionally, spiritually, you're operating at a 10, you're going to be an amazing leader, and you're going to be able to help people. It's put the oxygen mask on first. Always put the oxygen mask on first, and then you can help others. So tune in to your body sensations. Pay attention to any discomfort, tension, or pain in your body. Because these sensations can provide important insights into your overall health and well-being. I can tell when my shoulders and neck get really stiff, I'm stressed. I know that. If my shoulder blade starts hurting really bad, I usually need to take the time to stretch And so I'll do some yoga poses and stuff like that right in my office. I don't have any problems with that. I have a mat. I will get down and do those stretching exercises, And then it usually revitalizes me. I don't need an energy drink. I need to take a walk outside. I'm going to find in my toolbox, my physical toolbox, I'm going to find things that are healthy coping mechanisms. And usually that's a gym and we're going to get into that here in a second regularly check in with your body because it can help you detect potential issues early on and then allow you to take the action that you need to address them. Next, number two is evaluate your nutrition. And you've heard this over and over again, but I'm going to tell you from experience, for me, going keto, low carb, and living that way has helped me tremendously. Just being able to intermittent fast and then 11, 30, 12, 1 o'clock, I have eggs, fried eggs and bacon with an avocado. And I eat that every day because I love the taste. So then I'm still going keto. I'm drinking coffee, still going keto. And then at lunchtime, I have some meatballs with some low-carb tomato sauce. I may have some chicken with the low-carb tortilla. And you may be like, well, that's not very low-carb, but it kind of is. It's good enough. I get a little bit of carbs. That's fine. Find things, find, maybe I talked to a friend the other day and they absolutely thrive being plant-based. Perfect. What's a balanced and healthy diet for you? What gives you optimal energy levels and what gives you mental clarity? For me, being keto and intermittent fasting gives me mental clarity. When I'm fasted, I can have amazing meetings. That's for me. For you, it may be totally different. Assess your current eating habits and make necessary judgments. You cannot be an effective leader and eat fast food all the time. I'm going to repeat myself. You cannot be an effective leader and eat fast food all the time. You're cheating your body. If you're going to cheat your body, you're going to cheat in other ways. 
take the discipline, make the necessary adjustments to ensure that you're providing your body with the necessary nutrients to function at its best. It is your duty to make sure that you're feeding and giving energy to your body, not taking from your body. Most people in give and receive, you give to your body health. And what do you receive? Energy, clarity, the things that you need the most to be a leader. When you eat bad food, you're being selfish and you're not able to serve others properly. Next, monitor exercise habits. Regular exercise not only boosts your physical health, but it has a significant impact on your mental and emotional well-being. This was huge for me. I did not realize that my depression, and, and just it's just for me, maybe you need you know, prescription drugs, maybe you need counseling. I'm, I'm not saying any of that is bad at all. I want to clarify that. If you need um, a health practitioner to work with you through that process, 100% do that. But for me and me personally, the best thing that I have done for my mental and emotional well-being, especially with fighting my depression, is to work out and eat keto. For me, that is what has helped me mentally and emotionally. And I would say taking vitamin D, taking, taking my vitamins, vitamin C. There's a guy online on YouTube that I follow. And if you want to follow him, you can. His name is Dr. Berg, Dr. B-E-R-G. He is the one that's helped me. I started following some of the things that he said. My mental and emotional well-being was at a four. And I was functioning as a leader and being feeling sad and depressed all the time. But I was still like just grinning and bearing it. And then I started doing the things that he was sharing, and it has helped me tremendously. That's just a tip for you. As a self-aware leader, it's essential to maintain a consistent and varied fitness routine. You've got to have strength training. Number one, the, the number one thing for longevity, and they said this is strength training, because you've got to be able to, especially when you get older, being able to block a fall, uh, having strong, dense bones, uh, grip strength is really important. And then maintaining cardiovascular exercise, and then flexibility, mobility. Most people cannot get past their chair. They can't get in and off the ground easily. You should be able to pop off and on the ground easily. I'm 49 years old. I can get on the ground and pop off. And I, I can move all around. Mobility, flexibility, strength training, and cardiovascular exercise. That's going to help you guys. And if you you can do it, it's not that hard. I've hired a trainer to hold me accountable. How he holds me accountable, I'm going to give you a trick that I use. This is, is really, really good. What I allow myself to do is I cannot cancel the appointment. If I cancel the appointment, my trainer is allowed to keep, we've made an agreement in the beginning, my trainer is allowed to keep that money because he's there at the gym and he's waiting for me. If I cancel within 24 hours, or before the 24 hours, and it's a legit reason, then we're fine. But it has to be a serious reason. I cannot, you know, and I have to be honest with them, and I cannot lie. That helps me. So getting a trainer helped me, and then not allowing myself to be able to cancel the lessons and him to be able to take. And you need a, a trainer that will challenge you, that will make you harder, work out harder than you. This I see trainers all the time at the gym and they're just bullshitting with the person. The person hasn't even got a sweat. You shouldn't hardly be able to talk. Whether they're HIIT exercises, if you want to combine flexibility, strength training, cardiovascular, talk to your trainer. Let them know. Say, hey, I'm 49 years old. This is what I want. Can you do that or not? I'm not 22 and I don't work at a gym like you do all the time. I do not want to lift super heavy. I want to do 12, 15 reps, lighter weight, do cardiovascular, Get the strength training done and the flexibility. Next, prioritize rest and sleep. Adequate rest and sleep are vital for recovery, mental sharpness, and overall well-being. You've got to evaluate your current sleep patterns. If you're drinking alcohol before you go to sleep, that will not help your sleep. If you want to see how bad alcohol is before you go to sleep, I want you to get a whoop band or something that measures your heart rate variability and measures your sleep. And I want you not to drink one night and then drink another night. And I want you to see what happens. 
Your heart is working overtime to get rid of the poison that is in your system. And I drink beers occasionally and all that, but I'm telling you, you need to make a conscious effort to prioritize rest, relaxation, and you've got to get sufficient sleep each night. There's something wrong if you can't take eight hours of sleep at night. You're not that busy. You need to rearrange your schedule. Look at your schedule. See what you're missing, what you can delegate, how you can have other people handle some things for you so that you're getting the rest, the relaxation, and the sleep that you need. And what does relaxation look for you? I like to do active recovery days. I like to go on a light hike where I'm getting into zone two cardio. And then that that works for me and I get out into nature. I need to have sunshine and get out into nature for relaxation. So in closing, the self-awareness checklist is a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool that will help you as a leader. You can get it right now. Click on the link below.